You have read the question. Uh, we can start with two weeks. The first thing we are told to get. is optimal or the size now optimal or the size is given as q is equals to 2 r s out of h out of h then you get the square root. You get the square root of that. And if you look at the question, if you look at the question, Borrow, you're dealing with question one of the handouts that I've sent to the group. Uh, The annual demand is 1,250,000 units. That's the annual demand. <clears throat> then S is given at the fixed cost per order. And the fixed cost per order is shillings 55. I hope you can see it somewhere. That is a fixed cost per order. Then we have uh, what we call purchase uh, cost. Purchase cost is that 1.25. And in the notes we say that the variable ordering cost is treated as part of purchase cost. And I hope you can be able to see the variable purchase. The variable ordering cost is uh, 3.412. 3.412. Then from there, uh, we should be able to get this figure as what? If you take your calculator, we say that 1.25 plus 3.412 is that 4.662. Then I, the cost of capital, somewhere there you can see it as 10%, 10 percent, 10 percent. And then H now should be 0 0.1 of that 4.662 plus, as you can see there, there is a uh, insurance of 0 0.625 so that becomes times 0.1 plus 0.625 is 4.0912 those are the shillings and therefore my q should be equal to Two times twelve fifty thousand times S, which is uh, fifty. Five. We divide by. 4.0912 and then 
get the square root. So if you seek help from the cal, you know, 5, 2 times 12, 15 times 55. Square root of the answer is 5797.3. And when we are dealing with inventories, Q is always rounded up. Q is always rounded up. So this one should be taken to be 5798 units. 5798 units. That is what happens. Uh, this is this is H Nancy, not four. So the other thing is uh, annual orders. Annual orders. Now annual orders N is given as R divide by Q. R divide by Q. So our R is 1,250,000 divided by Q. And this Q is 5798. 5798. And if you take that, you get around 216 orders. Is 216. Okay, then we are told the actual cost of ordering turned out to be 50 per order plus 4.375 per unit ordered. Assuming that the recommendations in the above were implemented, what was Zulenia's cost of prediction error? So we are told to get Cost of prediction error, cost of prediction error. Now, the cost of prediction error borrow, maybe you can restart your gadgets. You can restart your gadget. Clearly. So the cost of prediction error is given as COPE is equal to actual costs minus optimal costs. Actual costs minus optimal costs. That is how you get the cost of prediction error. So when you mention that, you need to tell us that total cost, total cost, the formula for total cost, we know it is R times C plus R out of Q times S plus Q out of two times H. That is how you get the the total cost. So let's start with actual. 
Let's start with the actual. When we come to actual, when you come to actual, those who are saying you are not able to see, kindly adjust your gadgets. Uh, there is nothing that has changed today. Adjust. You can restart. Those problems are solved by restarting. Okay. Uh, so now, we are told that S turned to be shillings 50. Turn to be shillings 50. And then C now, C will be the one that is up there, that 1.25, that 1.25 plus 4.3. 75 4.375. So if you add those ones, that 1.25 plus 4.375 is that 5. 5.625. So H should be 10% of that 5.625 plus you add this one, that is 0 So you got 10% plus 0.625 is 4.1875. 4.1875. So the total cost, total cost, So the total costs will be twelve fifty times the purchase cost. The purchase cost is that five point six two five plus twelve fifty thousand. Twelve fifty thousand. You divide by fifty seven ninety eight. Fifty seven ninety eight, which is multiplied by S. S is fifty plus fifty seven ninety eight. You divide by two. You multiply by the value of H, which is uh, 4.1875. Four then you get to your calc uh, tell me what is the answer.
Check whether you are getting forty four million five fifty four thousand one sixty nine point one four. Is that so? Yes. So those who are complaining that they cannot see, we have cross checked with someone else, and the report is that. The board is very clear and audible. So please readjust your targets. There is nothing that I've changed today. Please readjust your targets. So you have got that, eh? I am. So the next thing that you need to do, the next thing that you need to do is now to come to optimal. Is to come to optimal. Now, optimal is where we are saying what would have happened if we knew the correct figures would be this one. So you see now here, we made this one thinking that our S would be 55, but it has turned out to be what? 50. Thinking that our patch is called to be that four, but it has turned out to be that five. So what you need to do now is to recompute Q. You need to recompute Q uh, here, like two times 12,000, multiplied by S, which is 50. You divide by you divide by eight, four point one eight seven five, four point eight one seven five. You get the square root of this. You get the square root of this. So this will be two times twelve fifty. Thousand times fifty. You divide by four point one eight seven five. You get the square root of that answer. And are you getting fifty four? Sixty four. Good. Fifty four sixty four units. Fifty four sixty four units. So with that now, you can be able to get your total cost. You can be able to get your total cost as 1250 multiplied by that 5.625, that 5.625 plus uh, twelve fifty thousand divided by fifty four sixty four multiplied by fifty 
you multiply by 50, then you say plus 54, 64 out of 2. Multiplied by 4.1875. Multiplied by 4.1875. So, ukienda kwa calculator, you'll be able to find 1250,000 times that 5.625 plus open the bracket 1250,000 times 50 divide by 5464. Close the brackets, open and see 5464 times 4.1875. Divide by two. Check whether you are able to get forty-four million five fifty-four thousand one twenty-eight point seven six. Confirmed, eh? Okay. Is confirmed. So if it is confirmed, down there now you see thus, cost of prediction error, cost of prediction error will be 44 million, five, five, four, one, sixty-nine point one four. Minus forty four million five five four one twenty eight point seven six Get forty point three eight. Forty point three eight. So that is that means it is the amount you paid in excess. It's the amount you paid in excess because of having a wrong prediction. Because of making an error in your prediction. Good. The next requirement says uh, what is the 95% confidence interval of the variable ordering cost per unit? So the confidence interval, uh, this one I will already give you a hint because there are things you already have covered elsewhere. So confidence. It all for the slope confidence interval for the slope confidence interval for the slope. So just want to remind you the formula that is written as B plus or minus T one minus alpha out of two uh, N minus one, you multiply by SB. 
So we came across that formula when we were dealing with relative tests. So I wish to leave it at that answer so that you can use it in some assignment. Hey, you are prime, those values. The same thing to do with the part B, which is talking of uh, the regression assumptions. We discussed six regression assumptions. So I propose that we go through them again and see which one applies in our question. Which one applies in our question. So with that now, we seek to proceed. Uh, and also on your own, eh, you will have a question two. Question two in the hard doubt. And I think there is one in the past papers. Let me see past papers, one was it. That should be a customer question. Like a small question, I hope I'll find it. Sorry, I'm not able to track the question now, but I know it's there. It's just like a small bit, just like a small one. So as we go by and by, uh, I know I'll point this out. Just like a very small bit, it's about A of a question four. So that you can go and run. Okay. And next Sunday, part one, we shall have a class. The budget for that next Sunday, but one uh, from there, let's now discuss something called presence of this car. <laughs> Discounts. So this is what you write. In business practice, in business practice, there are three types of discounts. There are three types of discounts. One, cash discounts, cash discount. Number two, trade discount, trade discount. Number three, quantity discount, quantity discount.
Then we write the presence of quantity discount. Presence of quantity discount. Makes purchase cost to decrease. Makes purchase cost to decrease. Comma. Ordering cost to decrease. Ordering cost to decrease. And holding cost to increase. And holding cost to increase. At lower levels of purchase units, at lower levels of purchase units, at lower levels of purchase units, a discount is beneficial. A discount is beneficial since total cost decrease. It's beneficial since total cost decrease. Full stop. However, however, Beyond a certain level, beyond a certain level, total cost increase. Total cost increase. What's up? Okay, to my same total costs increase. We'll stop and then you write that the remedy, the remedy, the remedy is to use, the remedy is to use the principal on discount. The remedy is to use the principal on discount. Which states that? Which states that? Only the minimum units. Only the minimum units required to qualify for the discount. Required to qualify for the discount. Should be purchased at a time. Required to qualify for the discount should be purchased at a time. Should be purchased at a time. 
stop. There are two types of discounts. There are two types of discounts. One, single discount, single discount, and the second one in it are multiple discounts. Multiple discount. Uh -huh. Let's discuss the single. Single discount. Single discount and write that. This is where, this is where there is only one rate of discount. There is only one rate of discount. Irrespective of the number of units, only one rate of discount, irrespective of the number of units purchased beyond the qualifying mark. Purchased beyond the qualifying mark. The following steps are taken. The following steps are taken. One, compute total costs without the discount. Compute total costs without the discount. Number two, compute total cost with the discount. Compute total cost with the discount. And step number three is compare one and two above. Compare one and two above and select the better one. And select the better one. Good. As I had something here for one or two minutes, I wanted to read question three, so that when I'm back, we saw question three, the handout. We can go through it.
And say, hold on. hold on. So we have discussed presence of these cards. And uh, in one of the assumptions that we had, it states that they are not discounts. That's why we are talking of presence of discounts. And then that assumption says that or goes now to give us another assumption that says purchase cost are constant. When you don't have discounts, purchase cost also remain constant. But in new life, business have uh, or business transactions have discounts. We have three discounts: the purchase, I mean, uh, the, the 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 cash discount, the trade discount, and the quote discounts. Now, what is of concern to us here when we are in inventory controls? Remember, we said we are under the system of the quantity. It is the quantity discount. Now, when you get quantity discount, there are three things that happen. One, the purchase cost goes down. So it is, it is no longer constant. Number two, the ordering cost reduces. Because when you buy in bulk, you require to buy fewer times. So the number of orders comes down. But number three, the holding cost goes up. Because now you're buying in bulk. So you now need more of the holding cost. If previously you were buying only one packet of milk that you use per day, then maybe you do not require fridge. But if you decide to buy a whole crate so that for two weeks you don't go back to the shop, then that may require that you have a fridge. So it comes now with uh, the incremental holding cost. And you have said at the beginning, uh, taking up a discount is good because it makes the cost reduce. But there comes a point where you find that the costs are going up. Now, the way out is that we should just buy the minimum. We should just buy the minimum because if you exceed, you find that you end up losing instead of gaining. And uh, what I would want to say is that if you are a business person, it is very, very good to give people discounts. Because you can easily take advantage of them. Since most of us believe that for any deal to be good, we must be given a discount. So as a business person, if you normally sell a product for 500, and this customer has come to your shop, you can have a starting point at 1400. You tell the customer, oh, this product is going for 1400. Then in the usual habit of customers, they start to negotiate. So the customer gives you a quote of 800. So first of all, you grab inside. Because you know, even if at the Samamiya Hapo, you already have 300 in excess. Now this 500 was still having a profit. Maybe you are, your purchase cost is 350. So when you sell at 500, you're still making a profit. When you have told this guy 14, he's now negotiating at what? 800. Finally, both agree to what? A thousand. And when you agree at a thousand, this customer goes away thinking that he has won because he has managed to squeeze you from 1400 to what? A thousand. Not knowing actually he's the one who has lost from 500 to what? Yeah. So anytime you see discounts being offered, you need to be very careful. They are not always genuine. Because in this world, there is nothing for free. I hope you know that. There's nothing for free. 
if you are currently enjoying anything for free, if you are currently enjoying anything that you think is for free, either you already have paid it and aware. And the guy who is now purporting to give you free things is just celebrating you quietly. Because you have done so much for them without knowing. Number two, someone has paid it for you. That's why you are enjoying it. Or number three, which is the most difficult or the most dangerous, is that time to pay will come. There's no way I can give you anything for free. There's no way I can invite you for a cup of tea for free. So when you see me tell you, let's go and take a cup of tea and I pay for you, you should know time to pay is coming. Yeah. That's the order of life. There is nothing for free. So the advice is, when you are invited to such purported free things, just take the minimum. If I invite you for a cup of tea, uh, of tea, please just take a cup of tea. Don't go to order milkshake. Don't order full chicken. Don't order so many other things so that the bill is 3000 Well and good, I will afford and I will pay, but I'm not a fool. I know. Leo Mekura, na mimi kuna mahali mita kupata, you will pay, and you pay, a, uh, you pay each and every coin. <laughs> yeah. That's how things are. And actually, in business practices, again, you find when they tell you that there is an offer, if you are keen, you realize that even the so-called uh, items on sale on offer, some of them are almost expired, or they have already expired. Na wewe unakimbia, unanumua mingi, unifikia, unasaidia, kuna mtu wakusaidia. No business person opens his doors to lose money. Because when you give people discounts, you are losing money. There is no business person in his right mind who one morning opens his doors na anasema leo nisikulia kukoteza pesa. Hakuna. So kiona unapewa hiyo, kuna mahali na wewe umepewa bali. Na ukisha ingia hapo, so I believe you have read the question. And if you have read the question, the first thing we are told is to compute the economic order quantity. Economic order quantity. Now economic order quantity is also the one we have been calling optimal order size. Optimal order size, so we will say that Q is 2RS out of uh, H, you get the square root. Get the square root. Then uh, R is the annual demand. The annual demand. And in the question that you have read, you are told that every week there is a demand of 12. And we have how many weeks? 50 weeks. So if you take your calc and say 12 times 50, you get 600. 12 times 50, you get 600. Uh, the next one is uh, ordering costs. Ordering costs somewhere there you read, it is how much? 16, eh? Yeah, it is 16. Purchase cost, you must have found out it was 9.6 per box. 9.6 per box. Then I, the cost of capital, you are told it is what? Is what percent? Hmm? 20%, 20%, 
So eight should be zero point two times nine point six. Zero point two times nine point six. Uh -huh. That is one point nine two. One point nine two. So here is only the cost of capital. There is no any other holding cost. So it then means that our Q should be two times six hundred times sixteen. You divide by one point nine two. Uh -huh. How many units? Ah, how many units? Yeah. 100 units. Uh, the next thing is uh, annual orders. Annual orders. Now, annual orders, N is given as R out of Q. N is given as R out of Q. So this would be 600, you divide by 100, and that gives you six. That gives you six orders. Uh, the next thing, the next thing that we are required to justify is whether the discount is good. So, Let's begin by writing the formula of the total cost. The formula of the total cost. So total cost, we know it is R times C plus R out of Q times S plus Q out of two times H. That is the formula of getting the total costs. That's a Okisha and Dika Ivo. We come here and say without discount. Because to Mesema, there are two types of discounts. There are two types of discounts. Uh, we have two types of discounts. The first one is ECO, which is this one. Aha. Uh -huh. So without discounts, the total cost will be 600 times 9.6 plus 600, you divide by what? 100. The 
ordering cost is uh, 16 plus 100 multiplied by 2 multiplied by h h is 1.92 H.912. Look at that. Nancy, the notes were sent, discussed, and they have been copied. Ah, uh, what is the what do you have? Fifty. 5952. 5952. Yes, Nancy. Uh, then we come to with discount. With discount. Now with the discount, C is 9.6 times. 1 minus 0 0.04 because as a discount rate that is offered so 1 minus 0 0.04 times 9.6 uh -huh. are you getting 9.216 okay that is the purchase so that means our h our h should be 0 0.2 times 9 1.2 1.8432 1.8432 that is the h then you need to get Q. You need Q. Now look here. Eh? You see here when you are computing Q, H was based on this value of 9.6. Now H has changed from 1.92 to 1. Uh, what 84. Eh? So it then follows that even Q here should change. But we have just said when you're dealing with discount, you don't compute. You just buy the minimum quantity. You just buy the minimum quantity, which is required to qualify. So the minimum quantity to qualify for this discount is what? It's 500. That's the minimum quantity. You just buy the minimum quantity that the supplier has given. So based on that, our total cost should be 600 multiplied by 9.216 plus 600 multiplied by 500 multiplied by 16 plus 500 divided by 2 multiplied by 1.8432. Eight four three two. So work on that and tell me what is the answer. Uh huh. You're getting six thousand and nine. Point six. Yes.
Okay. So if, it, if that is the case, what is the comment? Question was, eh? you say, well, this count, this count is what? Is beneficial. You say whether this discount is beneficial or not. What do you think? Is it beneficial? Yeah? Yes. Why? Huh? Why is it beneficial? It is not beneficial since total costs increases from 59.52 to 6009.6. It is not beneficial since total cost increases from 59.52. Yeah, that. Point six. Now, what uh, when we it be beneficial? It is beneficial only when only when total costs without discount. Is greater than it is beneficial only when total cost without discount is greater than total cost with discount. That is when you say it is beneficial. If the total cost without discount is high. So let D to be the discount rate. D to be the discount rate. Then, then C will be 9.6 times 1 minus D. That is uh, our C. Just like what we did up here, 1 minus 4. So this one opens up as uh, 9.6 minus 9.6 D. That is how it will open up. That is how to open up. Uh, then H, H will be 20% of 9.6 minus 9.6 B. 9.6 minus 9.6 B, 20%. So 20% is uh, 1.92 minus 1.92 D. That will be the H. And obviously Q remains what? Q remains 500 units. Q, if it does not change. At indifference point, at indifference point, indifference point is where the options are equally good. They have either the same cost or the same profit or whatever same that we are looking at. So at indifference point, we will have this one, eh? 600. Multiplied by the brackets 9.6 minus 9.6 D. 
That is the part is called plus 600. You divide by 500. Multiplied by 16. Plus 500. You divide by 2. Multiplied by 1.92 minus 1.92 D. So this is now the total cost with the discount. So the Hatujui, it should be exactly what? All what we know is that it should be smaller than this one. Be smaller. So we say it should be equal to 59. Then you start solving. You start solving. Nine point six is not the same as zero point four. Nancy, nine point six is the purchase price, and zero point zero four here was the discount. Ah, uh, be able to see that, Nancy. So six hundred times nine point six, you get fifty seven sixty. Minus with seven sixty B plus one point two times sixteen nineteen point two plus two fifty times one point nine two is four eighty minus four eighty B should be equal to fifty nine. Two. So when you open those brackets, I mean, are you both like terms together? Uh, I will have fifty-seven sixty. Plus 19.2 plus 480 minus 59.52 in 307.2 should be equal to uh, 57.60 plus 480. Therefore, B should be zero point zero four nine two three. Thus, B should be greater than zero point zero four nine two three. Or B should be greater than 4.923%. So the discount should be greater than. Now, I say, first of all, concentrate on what I'm teaching. If you divert, you may lose out. First of all, concentrate on what is there. Is that okay? Okay.
So on your own, you will follow the, or you will have the question that is there. Question number four. Question number four, we do the same thing. We do the same thing. Let's now discuss multiple discounts. Multiple discounts. multiple discounts and write that this is where this is where more than one rate of discount more than one rate of discount are offered are offered for different levels of purchase, for different levels of purchase. In evaluating these discounts, in evaluating these discounts, step number one, evaluating these discounts, follow in step number one, Compute EOQ, compute EOQ for each price break. Compute EOQ for each price break. Step number two. If the computed EOQ if the computed EOQ is semicolon in point number one above the break, above the break, comma, ignore, ignore. Roman two within the break within the break comma evaluate the computed eoq evaluate the computed eoq the computed eoq and roman 3 below the break below the break Comma, evaluate the lower limit of the break. Evaluate the lower limit of the break. Right, step number three. Step number three. Compare the evaluations in step two. Compare the evaluations in step two. And select and select the best and select the best. Yeah, so this is where you are given more than one uh, rate of discount for different levels of purchase. And we have like a simple question here, number five, that says. A manufacturer uses that 300 grams of a certain chemical per year. Delivery cost in card per order and shillings 40. And inventory carrying costs are estimated to be 30% of stock value. The normal cost per gram is shillings 22. 
but the supplier offers a discount of 1.5 on orders for 500 grams or more, and 3% on orders for 1,000 grams or more. So you are required to determine the order quantity. So in the solution for that, in the solution, we prepare an analysis table Prepare analysis table. Analysis table. Uh, the first column is called price break. The next one is called price. The next one is computed. EOQ, the EOQ, and then the last one we call it comment. Prepare a table like that quickly. Let's see, my time is almost. So, here, comment with dog. Just spread the mouse that way. So this one, if you buy between one and four ninety nine, they are selling to you at twenty two shillings. So the EOQ here will be two times uh, three thousand three hundred times the ordering cost. We are told is. Uh, 40, you divide by 0 0.3 times 22. Let's be fast so that we can. Two times that 300 times 40, divide by 0.3 of 22. Square root of that is 200. Square root of that is 200. You have to make what you can be happy before we make the comment. I find a comment. We are beginning if you buy between 500 and 9.99. You enjoy a discount of uh, 1.5%. 1.5%. You enjoy a discount of 1.15. So 1 minus 0 0.015 times 22. 21.6. 21 then the EOQ here will be two times that 300 times 40. You divide by 0.3 of 21.67. You get the square root. I'm getting 202, is that so? Yeah. 202. At 
then finally you are told if you buy 1,000 in a pound or more, you enjoy a discount of 3%. You enjoy a discount of 3%. So this is 21.34. So 2 times 3300 three, zero times 40. You divide by 0 0.8 times 21.34. Square root. So I'm getting 204. Remember, I told you when you get a decimal in uh, EOQ, you should always be out and up. When you get a decimal, you should be out and up. To get out that point, eh? that's a very hard one. That's why you can share a pattern. You check where it is in this image. It can either be above or within or below. So, he, where is it in this one? It is within. So, if you say it is within, and therefore you use Q as 200, that's what you have said. If it is within, you use Q as the permitted. I mean, as the computer. I have you now, E202, Yangaria Kwahir 8 is below. So if it is below, uh, you are going to use Q as the lower limit. The lower limit is 500. And then uh, we will give it. Is also below, eh? It's also below. So we are going to use Q as a thousand. It's a thousand. So below that, now you can have a table where we have the price. We have the units and then we have the total costs. So we have the price of 22, we have the price of 21.67, we have the price of 21.34. Here to the same mark, Q is 200, here it is 500, here it is 1,000. So using our formula of total costs, this would be that 300 times 22, that 300 times 21.67. That 300 times 21.34. Then plus plus that 300, which is divided by 200. That 300, which is divided by 500. That 300, which is divided by 1000. And here, now times the ordering cost is 40, 40, 40, plus 200 you divide by 2, 500 you divide by 2, 1000 you divide by 2, 
times 0 0.3, 0 0.3, 0 0.3 of 21.34, and 22. So, those are all right, be fast in copying so that I'll be able to pay the rest of the time. But 300 times 22 plus that 300 divided by 200 times 40 plus 100 times 43 times 22. Maybe you confirm my accuracy. This is seventy-three nine twenty. That's what we will confirm for the interest of time. Three thousand four hundred point two five So the cheapest of those three is uh, 73,400, yeah? This one. So the other device is economic, op uh, op uh, economic order quantity should be 500 units. That's how you handle multiple discounts. Those who are online, have you finished? Nancy, don't go ahead of me. All those formulas you're asking for, their time has not come. Okay. Those formulas you're asking, their time has not come. First of all, take what I'm giving. Is what is necessary for now. Yes, Catherine, let's see, finish. Nancy and Goro, have you finished? Yes, Goro. Okay, then take a photo so that we can end. Okay.
Thank you. That's good. So we stop there for now. We pick up from there in the next dress.